Welcome back to Coloring Through the Bible. My name is Keegan Harkins. When is enough enough? When can we be satisfied with what we have and we stop searching and grasping for what's just out of our reach? That's what we're going to be talking about with this video today. So the Bible actually teaches quite a lot about being content and satisfied with, with what we have. You know, it's one of the main rules, you know, the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's stuff. And Paul teaches about being content with whatever circumstances God leads us to. And starting in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, he teaches us that he's learned to be content in whatever situation he's in, whether he's rich or poor, whether he's hungry or he's full, whether he's got plenty or he's wanting, he's learned to be content with God. And in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, Paul continues and teaches, but godliness with contentment is great gain. But what's the difference between being content or satisfied and complacency or a lack of ambition? Is it wrong to want more? Is it wrong to strive after achieving more? Well, like most things in life, it depends on our motives. This is another example of why God says over and over and over throughout scripture that he judges man's actions in the context of their heart because motives matter. And not only do they matter, but they change the course of our life. What got me thinking about this was reading about the life of Abraham. Now, Abraham's dad started them out on this journey from Ur, the land of the Chaldeans where they lived, to Canaan, which is the promised land. Now, Abraham's dad, Terah, traveled as far as Haran and decided, yeah, you know, this is good enough. So he stops the journey and he settles there. He becomes content or satisfied. Haran was a bustling city, it was a major place of trade, it was modern, it was flashy, and there's a lot of similarities between Ur and Haran. So Terah felt comfortable and he stopped his journey. Now Abraham, however, knew that Haran wasn't the destination Canaan was. He wasn't satisfied with the comfort and the ease that Haran promised a wealthy family like they had. So he takes his wife and his nephew and all of his possessions and all of his servants and he keeps on going. He trades this life of ease and complacency for a hard life of travel and uncertainty as he chased a dream and a promise that God had given him. Abraham was content to follow God but not satisfied with anything less than his promise. That's the trait that really defines Abraham's character. He was content in uncertainty and satisfied by his faith. Now, years later, Abraham amasses this, this big army to go and rescue his nephew Lot. And Abraham succeeds, and he has an opportunity to become even wealthier than he already is by taking the spoils of war. But he turns it down. He says that he had promised God that he wouldn't take anything. And why? Because he didn't want anyone else to be able to say that they were the reason he was so rich or to take credit for his success. He only wanted God to be able to receive the credit. He was content with what God had given him. So God makes Abraham this promise. And in Genesis 15, 1, God tells Abraham, I am your shield, your very great reward. So Abraham should continue this feeling of contentment, right? But he doesn't. In verse 2, we read, But Abram said, O oh, sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I am childless? See, Abraham left Haran. And when Abraham left, God promised him that all the people of the earth were going to be blessed through him. That means he's got to have a child. He's got to have multiple children, right? He's got to have somebody that, that this can be the, the fulfillment of this promise. How can the entire world be blessed through you if you don't have a child? 
no matter how much fortune Abraham gathered, no matter where God led him to, Abraham would never be satisfied until he had received God's promise. Contentment in any situation isn't contentment in our situation. We can be content, like Paul said, in health or sickness, in wealth or poverty, in comfort or trial, because we are not satisfied by our circumstances, but through our circumstances, by our faith in God. The difference between Abraham and his father was where they found their contentment. See, Terah found contentment in the things of this world in the comfort and the ease and the familiarity that he found. And Abraham found contentment in God, not the things of this world. Because if God is leading you somewhere else, do not become content until you've reached where God has told you to go. And if God is saying, this is where you need to be, then be content no matter what the circumstances are because God's plan and his purpose are more powerful than what we can see with our eyes. Never be satisfied with anything less than what God has planned for you. That's the difference between being satisfied and being satisfied. Be satisfied with God, nothing less. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I hope that you've been encouraged. Thanks for watching. And until we see each other again, have a truly, truly blessed day.